Hi folks, this is Darren Marlia, CTO and founder of SDM Software. And today I'm going to take a little departure from my normal uh, rantings about group policy and talk about a new feature in Microsoft Azure called Azure AD Domain Services. You see a web page that I've got up here that uh, came out last week that uh, shows Azure AD Domain Services in preview mode. And I was really curious to see what this was all about because um, there's a lot of uh, discussion about this bringing um, the sort of on-prem AD services like LDAP, Kerberos, NTLM, and even group policy to the Azure environment, to Azure AD. So what I wanted to do is kind of walk through sort of a first look at Azure AD domain services and what it really is. So I've, I've gone ahead and set up an environment to uh, sort of exercise this. So I'm going to slip over to my Azure portal here, and I've got a Active Directory, Azure Active Directory instance set up, and underneath that I created a domain called stmsoftware.net. And if I go into the configuration for this, the very first thing that I did was turn on the preview for Azure AD domain services, and that's right down here. You can see it. It's shown as preview, and I just flipped this switch from no to yes, gave it the DNS domain of the AD domain I want to hang off of this Azure AD instance, and also the, the virtual network that I want domain services to connect to. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that Azure AD domain services is, at least in its current iteration, designed exclusively to be consumed by Azure IaaS or you know um, infrastructure as a service instances running in Azure. So if you want to spin up a Windows VM and join it to an Active Directory domain that's running in Azure, you can do that. It's not designed to be externally accessible. In other words, I can't um, ex access this new Azure AD domain service over LDAP over the public internet. In fact, there's no configuration exposed to set security groups or firewalls on the Azure AD uh, domain services instance that gets created. What you see here is after some period of time of enabling this service, it assigned me an IP address for the service. You might think about this as the IP address of the virtual domain controller that Microsoft has just spun up behind the scenes. And so now what happened is that I now have a Active Directory domain, sort of a traditional on-prem Active Directory domain listening on LDAP and talking Kerberos and NTLM, spun up called sdmsoftware.net. Now, as a precursor to this, I just want to share a couple things that I had to do. So I set up this virtual network. So I'm going to go down to my virtual networks in Azure and show you the virtual networks that I had to set up to make this all work. So if I go up here to my networks, I created this AD Domain Services virtual network. And if you go in under the configuration, I actually gave it the, I, I, I had defined an, a DNS server for the IP address of the virtual DC that, that Azure AD Domain Services spun up. And then I gave it a, basically a, an IP address range to use for this. What this does for me is any virtual machines that I spin up in this virtual network will get this DNS server address and will find my new Azure AD domain services. So if I go back up to my VMs, I, I went ahead and I spun up a VM and I called this Azure, I'm sorry, ADDS test. I spun it up and I joined it as a, uh, or I'm sorry, I logged into it as a um, as a local admin, so I created that local admin account when I spun up the, D, the, the, the VM. And let me just close out this stuff here so I don't confuse the issue. So I, I spun it up as a, as a, as a VM uh, running on that virtual network that I created. And then I as, lo logged in as a local administrator equivalent. I went ahead and I joined the stmsoftware.net domain. Now, in order to do that, I needed a credential in the domain. Well, how does that work? Well, if I come back to my Azure AD instance down here, the way this works is kind of slick. So I've got my Azure AD domain, and I've got users and groups defined in it. So I've got this 
um, you'll see sdmsoftware.net. I created this account called ADS Admin, and I gave it a username, ADS Admin at sdmsoftware.com, and a password. I also created some groups, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But what happens is, once my Azure AD domain services instance is spun up, anything that I create in Azure AD is automatically synchronized over to my Azure AD domain services instance. So even though I can't really manage it as I would in a traditional domain controller, the synchronization happens automatically behind the scenes from this Azure AD domain that I have here into the Azure AD domain services uh, virtual Active Directory that gets spun up. So the other thing that I had to do um, is I had to create, uh, let me go back to my Azure AD instance. One of the problems that I had when I first spun this up is I actually couldn't do anything on the Active Directory domain. I didn't have any rights. And I went into Active Directory Users and Computers on this machine that I joined to my virtual AD domain services. And I had noticed that there was this built-in security group that was created called AAD DC Administrators. And this group had no members in it. But this group had rights to do a lot of things in the domain, including manage group policy. So I couldn't figure out how to add my ADS admin user account to this Azure AD domain services DC administrators group. And then it struck me, well, I've got this synchronization work that's going on from my Azure AD instance into this stmsoftware.net domain. Maybe I can use that. And that's exactly what I did. So if I come back to my Azure AD instance, if I come into groups, I actually created a group with the very same name as the, the group that we just saw in AD. And I added my ADS admin user that I had created in Azure AD to it. And lo and behold, a few, maybe a couple minutes later, that ADS admin group got added to my Azure AD domain services domain, sdmsoftware.net. So in most regards, this looks like a normal AD. I've got users, these, these two containers, computers and users, I believe are what Microsoft intends for you to use. You'll notice that I can't actually create any objects. I can't, there's no new tab here. I can't create any OUs on this domain. So I'm really fixed in terms of where my computers and users reside. What I also noticed is that you can't actually create users manually in AD users and computers within this domain, you can only create computer objects. So it's tied down so that users, this users container only gets populated based on synchronizing from Azure AD uh, user and group objects, which was interesting. But nonetheless, I have, you know, most of the tasks that are available in AD users and computers are here. Um, I will note that the documentation does state that you're neither allowed to be member of domain admins nor enterprise admins, or maybe more specifically, you, you <laughs> there's no way to add yourself to either of those groups. I even tried kind of fudging it by creating a group called domain admins in my Azure AD instance and, uh, and putting a user in it, and it ended up stuffing it in this OU here instead of overriding the domain admins group membership. So that little trick didn't work. So then um, the other thing that I'll mention is group policy and how that works. And, you know, in the documentation, it talks about one GPO per user and one per computer. And lo and behold, when I went into GPMC the first time, you'll notice that these two pre-created GPOs exist here. Um, because I added myself to that DC administrators group, I was able to edit settings on those GPOs. So I can come in and edit this GPO and make changes to it for computers or user objects, but I can't do anything else. I can't, I can, I guess I can link GPOs, like if I wanted to link one of these GPOs that's not linked there already to that container, but I can't create any new GPOs in the domain. I can't link at the domain level. Um, so I'm really limited in terms of the things that I can do within this environment. I basically have these two GPOs, and then of course the two default GPOs, at my disposal and that's it. So it is somewhat limited in terms of the GPOs that I can create, but within a GPO, of course, you can do anything you want. So I do have full rights to be able to uh, 
essentially muck with the settings in these GPOs. So the other thing that I will mention is around passwords. And I noticed one piece of one of these articles that talked about password sync and the fact that if you have, let's say you have an on-prem AD and you're looking to extend it into Azure AD and then into Azure AD domain services, that's what they call hybrid organizations. So you might want to have domain join available for your Azure AD domain services that, that reflects your on-prem AD. Well, right now it says that password synchronization <coughs> is mandatory. What that means is you can't use the, a federation scheme to handle authentication through Azure AD, Azure AD onto your on-prem AD from Azure AD domain services. So you actually have to have password material hashes synchronized up to Azure AD and then that gets synchronized into this new Azure AD domain service. So uh, I think what that means is that for a lot of large organizations that have Azure AD, it's, it's, most of the time what I see is that password synchronization is not implemented. They do some kind of SSO over SAML um, or WS Trust or WS Fed to, do, to handle um, the authentication piece back to their on-prem AD. But if you are synchronizing passwords, what this does mean is that your VMs in Azure, like this guy here, could potentially be um, essentially authenticating using the same user objects that you have on your on-prem AD. I, I think about the word that comes to mind is sort of Azure AD domain sort of services is kind of a projection of your on-prem AD through Azure AD and in, into this new Azure AD domain service. So it is possible to end up getting, uh, if you are synchronizing passwords, a single sign-on experience after a fashion um, where you can use your on-prem AD credentials to, to essentially authenticate into these VMs running in Azure IaaS. So hopefully that gives you a, a good in-depth first look at Azure AD domain services. It is in preview mode, so I suspect it will change over time. And uh, I look forward to seeing how it evolves and how folks use it. Uh, at the moment, I, I've been thinking about the use cases for this, and they haven't really been hammering me over the head, uh, especially based on some of these limitations. But there are definitely some advantages of being able to sort of project your Azure AD users and groups and other uh, for example, credentials into this uh, sort of traditional AD on-prem environment. Hope that was useful, and uh, feel free to visit our website and comment on this uh, on my blog post that will accompany this video if you have any questions. Thanks.